as a as a writer who has experience, who has um, you're writing for a print publication, you have you know I I actually Harold Clernan in 1964, um, and I found this uh, had come out, and I gave you a printed copy of it. What Harold Clerman was a very well-known critic and director, and I don't have a copy of here. Nope, here it is. Um, he came out with what he thought what constitutes a qualified critic, and you probably enjoy. I'm not going to take the time to read it. And if you just switch it around, here he's talking specifically about theater, but if you can just. Uh, substitute theater for music rooms or anything. He had very strict qualifications. Will and Adam, how do, and Roy and Melody, how do you feel as someone who has the qualifications for a critic to write, a, well, I can't say against, but uh, you're writing with all these people who are kind of newbies on the scene and don't have the background you have. Well, that's fine. It depends how you define qualifications as a critic. I think that a lot of qualifi a lot of the most important qualifications of the critic uh, could easily be shared by any of these people writing. It's sensitivity and interest and engagement and, and writing skill uh, and uh, openness to new material and right. a, a passion. I mean, a lot of these things are common to all of us. Um, and then there are gradations of uh, talent or skill or engagement within that. Um, my problem actually, and this is a subtle point, so bear with me, it's not a subtle anyway. Here's what I want to say. I think that part of the problem with cabaret criticism in general is that it tends to be overwhelmingly positive uh, and overly positive. Uh, in ways that ultimately are understandable because it's a small community and you want to be supportive, but are not ultimately, in my opinion, that helpful to a community that is already beginning to erode uh, in terms of its artistic standards. Uh, getting on, on a, a just sort of a flow of puff pieces is not necessarily in the ultimate interest of the art form. Now, the problem with this diversification of media that we were talking about is that and this is true of print media, too, because, yeah, we may be in print, but a lot of people read us online. Anyway, I read us mm -hmm. online. <laughs> um, so uh, the problem with the, print, with the, with the uh, new media instead of the old media is that new media is distributed in very specific ways. Um, people send links to other people and that sort of thing. They will send links to positive reviews <laughs> from other people. They will not send links to negative reviews. And, you, and I know how many times an article of mine is shared. When I write a positive review for a play or a music show, it is shared vastly more than a negative review. Partly that's just because you know people are excited about something to see. <clears throat> but also, it's because artists and their friends are posting it or sharing it and the rest of it. And that ultimately happens with the blog posts or with other things, too. The good ones get shared, and the bad ones disappear. And that accentuates this existing trend towards the positive in reviews and eliminates or softens or mutes um, negative criticism. And I think ultimately that's a bad trend, uh, especially in cabaret criticism where it's already been endemic. Roy, yes. I just want to pick up on, on something that um, Will said. It's absolutely true that the Times has an insanely disproportionate amount of uh, influence. But that's not the issue here. That's a separate issue of how to get people in seats. The issue is criticism, the quality of criticism. And there, as I've said before, and I'll say forever, there has indeed been crap in the Times. It may be influential crap, but it's crap. So, so I think the issue is the quality of a review. And I think that's what we should focus on. That yes, is, yeah, is a separate yeah. issue. Um, and. There's a purpose to be served other than getting butts and seats, and with what we may not want to talk about this now, and that is the purpose of writing, the purpose of criticism. My purpose is almost never, ever, ever to get butts and seats. Someone else can worry about that. I have several purposes. And I, which leads into the next question. And, and that's all served by whether it's a blog or a, a thoughtful blog that deals with analysis 
or it appears in a, in a major publication such as Wall Street Journal of Time out or the New York Times. My next question was going to be, I was going to ask each of the critics who their audience is. Uh, can I address the last question? Wait. Are you busy? Wait, wait, the question from before. <laughs> Melody, chime in. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to because it's a very huge part of what I do. Um, about how to get heard and, and, and when people say, listen, if I write one bad thing about someone, they're not going to send out the review. And that, that is it. And they won't quote me in their thing. Uh, and even because people become very sensitive. I'm like that too. If I got eight reviews that said I was the greatest thing, you know, since whatever, if I had one review that said one thing, I'm like, screw them. Because people used to be able to take a little more criticism than they were because it's not people just writing for each other. I used to read opera reviews where they'd say Pavarotti did this and he did that, the greatest singer in the world, but they would say he did something that could be changed. It's not that way right now. Well, so l let's just define the audiences. <coughs> I'd like to hear Roy, Will, Adam, <coughs> Melody. Who is, who are you writing for? Well, now I'm writing for singers, um, friends of singers who may send links, <laughs> but, but, but more but also other industry people. Industry. I, yeah, because I've had um, managers send my reviews or publicize my reviews to bookers around the country. So it's, it's, it really is industry people. Um, and that certainly influences my objective exactly. in writing and the style and the content. And we can talk about that later. But I've also, when I was on Radio Weekly, I wrote, uh, I spoke to a general audience. But a city search on the internet was a general audience. Other publications that I've written uh, for were general audiences. So I've done both. Okay. Will? Um, I think the question is valid in the sense that, uh, at least for me, it's important to remember that you're not writing for singers, that you're writing for people that may or may not come to hear you know, a performer. And I think the last exactly. thing you want to do is you know, give the singer advice, you know, I think you should have modulated in the third chorus, I think your B flat's a little sharp. You're not a vocal coach. That's the last thing you are. You're not telling them how to put together a show. You're not giving them, uh, you're, you know, you're not writing a guidebook how to sing, how to do a cabaret show. You're telling the audience this is a show worth singing or not. And sometimes, I mean, all, all the times, frequently a singer will come up to me and thank me for writing a good review, which is nice, but at the same time, I always have the same reaction. I look at them like, you know, it's so irrelevant. Of course you like it. And, you know, I mean, it's nice if you did it, you know. Um, but it's not what I, I didn't write it to get a, you know, positive reaction from you. That wasn't my intended thing. And I think because so the camera, no, I mean, like I say, you know, the guy in, who's reading your paper, you know, and he's going to see one show this weekend, you know, you want to tell him what to go see, what's really good. And because of that, I rarely focus on uh, I, I mean, I rarely review a show. If I really don't like a show, I won't write about it just because mm. why is it worth this guy's time to read about what he shouldn't see? Here's, you know, one, two, three, four, five shows that you should see. Why is it worth 10 minutes of his time to read a review of a singer he's probably never heard of and probably wouldn't go? You know what I'm saying? It's just, it, 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 it's, it's a very rare circumstance. You know, it's not like a Broadway show where there are only so many Broadway shows opening a year, so many big Broadway musicals, and if it's <coughs> lousy, it's the critic's job to tell everybody it's lousy. But if there's a lousy cabaret singer in the Metropolitan Room, you know, who cares? It's a tree falling in the forest. Um, but, like I say, you know, I write for the guy that's trying to decide what to see that weekend. And whether or not the critic, I mean, the, the performer likes it or is happy or sends it to his friends, I could care less. I mean, I'm all, ultimately, I'm really... You know, even beyond that, to be really mercenary, I'm really writing for my editor. You know, I'm, and, and my editor does not know that much about cabaret. So, I mean, when I write Porter instead of Cole Porter, and my reviews, I mean, most of my reviews are 150 words, so I'm really thinking, where can I save a word here and there? You know, I mean, in terms, in terms of the, um, you know, knowledge level, I'm always, like, very careful in terms of, you know, who I'm... I th actually, I think most of the people who are reading my column will know who Porter is, but sometimes I have to, I don't want to say dumb it down, but be more specific for my editor. Although you'd think by you know, having edited me for all these years, he would know what I'm talking about by now. But just the same, you know what I'm saying? I write for as general an audience as I can. Uh, and again, you know, whether or not whatever the, the artist happens to do with it you know, is totally secondary. And, but, you know, of course, I do want to see artists I like get you know, bigger audiences and get uh, attention. But you know, my... my, my you know, I think that serves the community and the art form 
uh, as you know, in the long run. But I, like I say, the main thing is for the reader, for, for the audience, for, for the people who you know, the perspective, the intended audience.